The end is an impactful tool for communication. If you're looking for different ways to connect, you should head online to theskindeep.com slash shop. Thank you. What are the three proudest moments that we've shared? Ah, uh, the, the first one, my release, just seeing you. <laughs> I was so happy. It was like, oh my God, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> That's another proud one was um, just to be there for your anniversary, um, the retirement. I though I didn't want you to retire, <laughs> but you know, because you know, I, this is you, this is helping people. So, but I'm, I was just proud just to be in a part of that, and you know, just because you know, you have helped me and, and tremendous other people. But just on the selfish side, just the help that you had gave me, just coming home and. Don't know nothing, not how, you know, not even how to use a cell phone or even to get around on the train. And that was big help for me. Oh, do your best impression of me. <laughs> or both. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my God. Do my best impression of you. Oh. I think when somebody is talking to you, there's been times when you've been in my office and somebody may be sharing an experience with you mm -hmm. and you know it's bullshit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Y you know, um, they may be talking about something that went on in the prison yeah. and, and what took place and like I said, you know it's BS. But you won't tell them it's BS. Mm -hmm. You'll just say, hmm, okay. And then, you know, you give them a look and you shake your head and say, hmm, okay. <laughs> and that's it. Yeah. You don't say nothing else. You don't do nothing else. But the person does not realize mm -hmm. that you know that they BS it. And okay. I think that is, that's unique. But you're never alarmed by anything. Mm -hmm. And opposed to breaking somebody's spirit or tearing mm -hmm. somebody else's story okay. down, even though you know it may be a lie, you'll just, hmm, okay. okay. <laughs> so that's the only thing okay. I can. All right. What have you learned about finding employment post-incarceration that you did not expect? Mm. It's a very challenging um, world out there in employment. But what, what I learned most is that you have to be yourself and be responsible. I always say, I, I'm a, if I get a job, I'm going to do the job well. You know, because if you don't do the job well, then people aren't going to keep you. You know, look at me, they called me for one week and I've been there two years, you know. It didn't take long for them to give me the keys and right. I still have the keys. <laughs> I have the master keys, I mean, but, you know, I remember when I first came home after my first job, my mother said, give me the check and she took a picture of it. She still got the picture, <laughs> you know, because that was like, that's my first job. That's my first check. I got to take a picture of that. She said, you know, and so, you know, you know so these things, you know, and we, we sometimes remember it, reminisce it, but it's good. And just responsibility is the key, you know, to yeah. everything. You know, so that's my thing. What do you think has been the hardest thing for me after coming home? Mm -hmm. mm. I think the hardest thing um, for you ha has been knowing that you still have some pending legal things going on um, that can jeopardize your stay perhaps mm -hmm. here in, um, in the United States. I just think that um, you're taking it like a trooper that you are. Mm -hmm. I think that you know that, you know, God is with you through, during this process you're also mentally preparing yourself in the event that you do have to no longer be here with us. But also knowing um, that if you have to go back mm -hmm. to what is called home mm -hmm. for them, mm -hmm. that you're gonna do re-entry there. Mm -hmm. It's already set up. Right. And it's just a matter of you taking the knowledge and, and bringing it yeah. with you. I mean, you know, you're so right with that, Doc. But then again, you know, um, I'm a man of faith, and I, I put everything in God's hand. 
And, you know, um, it wasn't easy, but I said, he got me this far. I know he gonna pull me too. So I just, you know, just humbled myself and I called upon him, man, and just, you know, I just say, you know, every morning I get up, I said, Father, this guy might go in and come in, you know? Because I know tomorrow is not promised. That's right. And, and that's how I feel, I honestly feel that way. Because I'm gonna continue doing what I'm doing. Because so much people that, you know, yourself included that, you know, has encouraged me to want to help people along the way. <laughs> What's a trait of mine you wish you had and why? Patience. I mean, you have tremendous patience with people in general. And, but then again, you, you also know when like, you know, when some people come with their bull crap, you would just give it to them. So that's a good trait. Me, like, I will hold back a little bit and not try to, but you will let them know, listen, you don't come here with that, you know? <laughs> so that's a good trait, just being direct. You have a direct, you know, you tell them like it is. I gather we can contribute that to my um, years of working for Department of Corrections. There's no room for indirectness. Okay. You know, you have to just be straight you know, forward with whatever it is. And as you know, working in a prison, mm -hmm. as I have, um, and being a female, mm -hmm. there's no room. You have to stand tall and stand right. stern um, in order not to um, get taken advantage of or, mm -hmm. or ran over. Okay. But at the same time, you know, I would hope, you know, I don't know this for sure, but I would hope that my directness is still coming across with some level of respect. Yes, yes. With, yeah, with, with some level know, of respect. Respect, that's, and that's what I like. I love that. I love that trait about you. How have I surprised you most since leaving prison? <laughs> what huh. you oh, God. Oh, God. Well, I'll be honest with you. I think what surprised me the most is the fact that you're still with your girlfriend. <laughs> and the reason why I say that is because in a lot of t in a lot of cases, mm -hmm. people are in relationships with people or in relationships with people while they're incarcerated, mm -hmm. and then when they come home, after a period of time, the relationship dissolves itself mm -hmm. only because the person who was incarcerated sometimes is not the same person who comes home, mm -hmm. and the person who was coming to visit is sometimes not the same person that arrived when you got there. But I think what also surprised me, one day you were in the office. This mm -hmm. is before you got the job. Mm -hmm. And you would come to the office every day, you know, cause you was trying to hone in on your yeah. people skills yeah. and learn about the phone and mm -hmm. this. And then you was also helping yeah. some of the, the, the younger guys, you That's know, right. that would come in. And she happened to call you. Mm -hmm. And she was asking you a million questions like where you at, what you doing, where you at, why this. And you said, <laughs> quote, you know, I really don't have time for this, right? I'll talk to you later mm -hmm. and hung up the phone. Mm -hmm. And I said, go Simmons. <laughs> so, and the reason why I said go Simmons is because I've also experienced a lot of people coming home from prison who have significant others, whether it's male or female, mm -hmm. and they feel indebted to them to the point where they have to tell every m move they make. Well, it's 9.05, I'm going to the bathroom, yeah, yeah. it's now 9.15, yeah. and I'm gonna go to smoke a cigarette. And I just felt as though you were standing your ground as if to say, listen, I'm trying to do me, I'm trying to work on me. Mm -hmm. I've been away umpty ump years. I don't have the luxury mm -hmm. of just sitting in the house with my mom. Mm -hmm. I have to come out, I have to do people skills. I, I have right. to get reacquainted and I'm in the offices with Doc and them. I'm mm -hmm. doing some work, yeah. you know, as if to say, this is the safe space. And I'm sure, you know, she wasn't trying to track you mm -hmm. to see if you was with someone else per se, as much as it was worried about your comings and goings mm -hmm. because you were new to navigating the city again. Th that's what I would like to hope it was. I'm not I gonna- <laughs>